For gaming fans, making a trip to the cinema to see your favourite game translated into a movie has often become a nightmare because of how poorly the transition is onto the big screen. But on one occasion, that nightmare was by design. Welcome to Saber Duel Gaming at the Movies, and welcome to our retro review of Silent Hill. Why does it seem so difficult to adapt a game into a good movie? Well, I suppose a different way of looking at it would be, why do we as gamers never seem to be satisfied with a gaming movie? Now, in many cases, that is because quite clearly, the movie is absolutely awful. Just, just the worst, just the worst. However, on a lot of other occasions, it's because the, the actual movie usually doesn't tie into what we want in the game, what we like about the game and what we want to see transferred onto the big screen. Maybe the story is original, maybe our favourite character isn't portrayed as the star of the movie, or maybe a scene, a moment from within the game that means so much to us, just doesn't play out the same way or isn't even remotely considered in the big screen adaption. But one thing that I would say is at least partly true is our love for the game often gets in the way from appreciating whether the film itself is good. And I don't mean is it a good adaption of the game, but I mean is it objectively a good movie? When I watched the Resident Evil films, Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, I couldn't do this. I couldn't look at it objectively because I had such a love for those franchises. However, that wasn't the case with Silent Hill. As much as it's fundamentally the type of game that I should have liked, I'd never really played any of the Silent Hill games until I played Shattered Memories on the PlayStation Portable, and even then, I never really got into it. It just felt like a franchise that got away from me. Despite this, as a lover of horror films and horror anything, when Silent Hill was released in 2006, I made a conscious effort to go and watch it, and as someone who loves video games and loves horror, but had never actually played those games, it gave me a really interesting perspective. But what did that perspective lead to? Well, let's find out. Well, let's start with the plot. We're introduced to a family. Adopted parents, Christopher and Rose, have a young daughter called Sharon. This young girl is clearly tormented and plagued by night terrors, sleepwalking, often putting their life at risk, and then waking, screaming of a place called Silent Hill. Christopher is adamant that she needs medical attention and medication, but Rose is seemingly drawn to take her to Silent Hill, seeing this as the best way to solve things, and when Christopher doesn't agree, she decides to take her young daughter in the middle of the night and race out to find this place. I'd like to say this makes some sense, maybe she thinks it would be a positive thing, but she's clearly been looking up online, and even Christopher finds evidence that she's seen that this is one of the most dangerous and seemingly haunted places in all of America. He's got to be wondering if his wife is more insane than any monster we're going to see in this film. In the process of getting there, she's clearly looking suspicious as hell. The young girl is obviously terrified, and they actually garner the attention of a young police officer called Sybil. That's not a name you'd normally expect for a young police officer, is it? But let's move on. In the chase that ensues, there's a crash, and when they all wake up, the young girl is missing. Sybil and Rose are then, whilst both very suspicious of each other, are determined to work together to find Sharon and hopefully solve the mystery of what the hell is going on in Silent Hill. They meet a lot of disturbing and freaky looking monsters, but also a lot of other people who are in many ways more mysterious and more monstrous than anything else they see, and soon they find out that these people consider Sharon to be some demon witch thing called a lesser. There's a lot that's explained as to why a lesser and Sharon overlap with each other and the further the film goes the deeper that mystery goes but I won't go too much into spoilers suffice to say this place is a nightmare town filled with creatures monsters and even the town itself 
is seemingly alive and split between a purgatory and a hell on earth. Christopher himself is adamant he wants to try and find and rescue his daughter and his wife, but even when he makes it to Silent Hill, accompanied by another police officer who's looking for Sybil, they're confronted with yet another version of Silent Hill, very different to both versions than our main protagonists trapped in Silent Hill are actually seeing. On some occasions, they're even stood in exactly the same place. He can even smell her perfume, but they're just not there together. But was it loyal to the video game source? Well, aesthetically, the film looks incredible. In fact, they've done a very good job of showing all four versions of the town that you would expect to see in an average Silent Hill game. And even film critics commented on how visually impressive the movie was. So with regards to creating the world, the place Silent Hill, the film did an exceptional job. However, from this point on, things start to branch out a little bit. You can tell that the creators of this movie were very keen to be loyal to the Silent Hill franchise, but at the same time, did that usual thing of wanting to branch out and create something original. Instead of using the main character, Henry, that we saw in the first Silent Hill game, with him looking to find his child, we instead got two new characters, Rose and Chris, who seem to be a split of all the traits that we saw in Henry, and their own quest to find their daughter is similar, but not quite the same. Also, a number of the creatures that we see throughout Silent Hill are either original designs, although very much in keeping with the feel of Silent Hill, or they are ones that apparently don't quite fit within the context of this story. For example, the famous Pyramid Head character is one that is very much akin and specific to Silent Hill 2. His creation is very much a result of the character and the character's difficulties from within that game. So here, it's very much just the visual of Pyramid Head, not really the character. So let's think about how this was received. Well, first of all, it got rubbish scores from critics. Critics absolutely panned it. They did give some praise for the visuals. In fairness, it would be kind of impossible not to. Visually, this film is pretty impressive. However, beyond that, they thought it was the worst. It got especially scathing views for what they considered to be a very confusing and convoluted story. On Rotten Tomatoes, which is admittedly unreliable, it sits on 32%, and Entertainment Weekly gave it a D+. Doubling down on the hatred, Nathan Lee of the New York Times added that by the end of this film, it wraps up like the outrageously overwrought fantasy of a movie nerd obsessed with horror who has been given obscene amounts of money to adapt a video game. Tell us how you really feel, dude. I'm guessing you don't like it. In contrast to that, CBR in 2019 identified that the first Silent Hill movie is probably the best video game movie adaption ever, and it has certainly been ranked in the top 10 of these financially. But what about Silent Hill fans? How do they feel about it? Well, while we have to respect individuals' opinions, and I certainly do, as a community, the Silent Hill fans clearly can't make their mind up. Looking at notice boards with people who are serious Silent Hill fans voicing their opinions on this movie, I saw everything from it is blasphemous, it is offensive, it is the worst thing that's ever happened to the franchise, to this movie is amazing, that they love it, that they respect that it's not canon to the games, but that it's clearly something there for fans of the games to enjoy. But what about me? I had never played those games, so what did I think? I loved it. I loved this film. The idea that some critics are sat there going, oh, it's too confusing and convoluted. I don't get how. They are clearly very uneducated because this movie did make sense. Yes, there were some questions left unanswered. And by design, the writers and directors of this didn't want to feed you all the answers. At the very end, you are left wondering, What's happening there? What was that meant to mean? It wasn't being fed to you in the same way many movies are. And I found that really enjoyable and thought-provoking. 
I found the characters really likeable and relatable. The villains so detestable. This was one of the best movies, horror movies, I'd seen that year. And in many years since, I've rewatched this film time and time again. And the atmosphere behind it is incredible. The way it portrays Silent Hill is both beautiful and haunting and deeply terrifying. And this brings me back to where I started. If I was a big fan of this game franchise, I would have the exact same issues as many of the fans of this do. Hell, I've had those same issues with so many adaptions of Resident Evil, although I have still found something to enjoy in many of the movies. But having the advantage of looking at it simply as a movie, with a very, very basic understanding of what Silent Hill is meant to be, I found it fantastically entertaining. So, does that mean that we as gaming fans can never really give a fair crack of the whip to a movie or TV show in the same way as someone who has no knowledge base of it can do? Well, to a degree, yes. In the same way a fan of a book such as Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings when watching a movie will be instantly drawn to the things that are missing, characters that aren't being represented in the way they should be, whilst casual viewers who are seeing these worlds for the same time are lapping up every positive part of the movie. We as gaming fans will do the same. We love the games that we play. We can become so entrenched in the lore behind them. We know the characters inside out and when they're not portrayed the way we expect them to be, of course we're going to focus on those things. The slight difference between books and video games is that generally a book tells one story. A video game creates a world. The way you play the game and I play the game means that story is often going to unfold in a slightly different way. And as the lore continues to expand, it can be quite overwhelming to pick just one way to tell the story. The way you take it, the way I take it, goes in completely different ways. That film can only go one way. So maybe it's understandable that they often want to put their own spin on the world. And what's most important is that the film represents that world correctly at least in my opinion. In the end, it comes down to their target audience. Do they want to appeal to the fan base that already exists, or do they want to try and piggyback off a brand, a name, and use that to garner new fans? I can understand why they'd want to do either, though I would usually appreciate it if they did the first. What I would say was the recent Super Mario Bros. movie took a different spin to things than the games. It's very rare for Mario and Peach to go and rescue Luigi, and I don't seem to remember Bowser singing a song about his deep love for Peach in any of the games either. Still got accepted quite widely, didn't it? But in the end, fans of a game have every right to feel however they feel about a movie or TV adaption. But for me, how do I score it? It's really interesting to separate these two things. As a fan of games, I always want it to be just the way it should be. Retell that story I know from the game, but when I'm confronted with a movie that doesn't do that, but not for a game I love, it gets an 8.5 out of 10. This is a really good film, but I want to hear what fans of the game think. Was there enough similarity between the game and the film for you? Did you recognise that it was nothing like the game, but still able to enjoy it as a separate piece of media? I understand that's hard, but comment below. Let me know what you thought. And until next time, take the high ground.